All right, guys, so today uh, I'm a little late in the season. I usually do this uh, beginning of November, but uh, we're going to do it now, you know, and uh, pair up these animals. But right now I'm preparing tubs for um, for hibernation on my colubrids. So what I did was I got these Sterilites, or actually these are Hepties. Um, and the reason why I go with these here is that they have a lip that overlaps with the container here so that if these animals the snakes do try to push out that it doesn't uh it doesn't allow them to escape um and they latch on tight so that when i go to lift like this they can't get out but there's enough air exchange for these animals now if you want you can drill a couple holes in the top um, i may i may go through and drill one hole on either side um, just for a little bit of airflow but honestly there's it's not an airtight seal it's not a food grade container so um, you'd be all right um, putting these animals down for hibernation now uh, the other thing that i do while these animals are down there i typically keep the animals down there for man i start Typically, I start in November, and then I take them out. It be probably it should be <laughs> right about the end of January, which is what it is today. So it's one of the last days of January, and uh, when I'm filming this, and then I let them heat up for about a week and a half, and I pair them up by uh, by uh, Valentine's Day. Is typically how my I do my colubrids. I got a little busy this year with work, so I'm gonna put them down now, let them go for the month of February, um, maybe through mid March. And then take them out mid-March, pair them up, and hopefully I'll get some locks uh, by the beginning of April, which isn't too bad. So just uh, babies later in the season than earlier. So uh, what I do is I'll keep these water dishes inside the, uh, the tubs with the snakes. And so oops, I'll fill up the water. So that they have water but because you know they're not super super active so they could stick their heads inside that water dish and it allows them to get food because none of their heads are thicker than that it, sorry not get food but allows them to get water but it also doesn't ruin or soil any of the bedding so that's always a good thing sometimes i'll also put like a towel in there just so they can kind of bury themselves and kind of and i use uh kitty i don't know if i can find them. oh here we go um, I just use these shop rags just as something for them to kind of like burrow underneath. I don't do a super, super thick amount of, uh, of, sh of shavings, but um, yeah, so I'll keep those animals in there. This year, I'm planning on pairing up my Mexican black king snakes again. This will be my eighth or eighth or ninth season breeding Mexican black king snakes. Um, this will be my first season pairing up uh my uh, grow out gray banded king snakes and this will be my second attempt at pairing up my uh, costa rican black milks so hopefully that'll go well all right so this is my female mex or my, my female costa rican black milk um she last year didn't show really any sign of uh wanting to breed so again we'll do it again this year we'll see what we can do but Again, an amazing species. I can't wait to uh, hopefully produce these animals uh, this season because they're they're such a sought after individual. I honestly think that the Mexican or sorry the Costa Rican black milks are going to be just as big as the Mexican black king snakes. This is my male, and I've risen ra that yeah, I've raised him from a baby. The female I got as a sub adult. So, and you could still see the faint bandings of his red right there on his tail on his uh red yellow and uh and black bandings there so yeah and she's still got you could see a little bit on her nose there all right so this is my pair of blair's phase gray banded kings so this is my male here. It's my female. She's got much more uh, kind of a lighter, beautiful uh, reddish coloration on those on her patterns there. 
awesome can't wait to get these guys going i know uh, i've heard you know stories of having these uh their babies be a little a little more difficult to uh to raise up but i've got a good buddy who's uh done this year after year these are actually some of his babies um that i've been raising up and uh very intriguing i've got a i'm very uh uh intrigued to see how this process is gonna go um but this is just an absolutely beautiful snake that unfortunately i mean has kind of gone to the wayside i mean not many people have been breeding this animal um and you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am a, a educator first and foremost. So our, my nine to five is um, I'm an environmental consultant, but, you know, we do educational programs and I'm not a breeder, but I like to breed stuff that, you know, that looks appealing to me and stuff that I'm really interested in doing. Um, and so these animals, I was fortunate enough to just be raising up um, and hopefully I'll be producing these animals in this next coming season um and, and getting some more blair's phase out there because i feel like there's not many gray bands out but um not that not to say i'm a trend setter nor am i a trend chaser but i think that these colorful colubrids are on the rise um and that uh i i guess i'm just getting lucky with things that catch my eye so uh, my advice to any future breeders would be to again breed what you love and uh the money will follow i feel like that's you know it's uh, something that all of these breeders say, but I honestly, it, it couldn't be more true in my situation. I started breeding New Mexican black king snakes, um, back in 2013 and, uh, couldn't sell them for, for 40 bucks. And now these animals, uh, Mexican black king snakes are 250 still on the market. And it's the, the 30th of, of January, 2021. So, um, you know, it's, it's crazy how, the market fluctuates um but i'm just happy that you know i can uh i can produce these beautiful animals uh now from what i understand these gray band and king snakes don't have eggs like a uh a mexican black kings or, or your typical king snakes they actually have um they actually have more of a clutch that looks like corn snakes so they're a little bit smaller of an egg a little more circular um, so I'm, I'm very intrigued to see what those look like as, as well. So, but on top of that, I don't think I'll go through the others that I'm doing, but I'm doing the high white cow Kings again, and I'm doing my Mexican black King snakes, but these were the two that these will hopefully be the first year I produce. Um, just very excited to, uh, to get these guys in hibernation and, and start pairing them up. So awesome. Any questions you guys have, uh, feel free to comment. Um, you can contact me at, uh, crosstownexotics at gmail.com um, or you can go on to our website my phone number is there feel free to give me a call as well all right i uh, hope this helps any of you guys when it comes to uh for your colubrids and uh good luck everyone on your season